Hello everyone and welcome back to our survival game series. In the last episode we started work on the tool system. We've got the foundation of that in there. In this episode though we're going to work on the actual tools dealing damage themselves so we can use the tool against the resources and more importantly have the resources give us resources if we are using the correct tool. So let's jump straight in. So last time we got our axe or knife in this case swinging around. We now want this to deal damage to something. Now this thing at the moment is just receiving damage on a timer. We'll be taking that off as well in this episode. So we can actually deal damage to it and chip away some information. So on our weapon on animation. Hang on, where do I go? I'm gonna go back to there. Um we're gonna make a anim notifier to trigger a damage event. So we're gonna right click here and go to blueprint class and in all classes search box search for the uh, anim notify event uh, not event uh, class here select and we're of course want to deal damage notify and open this up now inside of here you get a couple of functions if you go into override function you'll see received notify the way this works is that we attach this to an animation at a certain point in time and when this notify is reached it will trigger this function and this is where we're going to set up the damage so here i'm going to just go that along and i'm going to do a sphere trace so let's do sphere trace by channel and by channel it's going to go and we want to take the first person camera point of view so we're going to get the player camera manager and we're going to get the location and we're going to plug that into the start point the end point is going to be the location plus the range of the attack so from the get player camera manager we need to get their forward vector first of all so which way we're facing and multiply this by the range float um, so I'm going to do let's say 200 now if you have different weapons with different ranges you can make this variable if you like but we're going to have all ours have the same so I'm just going to leave it as that so then I'm going to add these two together vector plus vector and plug that into my end there and then the sphere trace you have to give it a radius so we're going to give it say I don't know, 40 tweak this again later if we need to uh, but that will do Active to ignore, we need to tell it to ignore itself. Now you do have this ignore self tick box, but this doesn't work on here because ignore self refers to this notifier. We want it to refer to the owner of the mesh. So from the mesh component, drag down and do get owner. And we'll plug that in. And we want to add it to the access to array. So we have to do make array and plug that in there. Okay. On the other side of it, we need to deal damage. So we're going to take the out hit here, do break, hit result. And we want to take the hit actor here and do apply damage. And we're going to plug that in. And the damage we're going to deal here is a set amount of damage. So let's take a look at our resource and see how much damage we're dealing with it on the timer. Uh, so equip stone resource, resource component. Oh no, there you go. Base damage one. So if we do damage of one, and the damage causer will be the owner of the mesh component. So it'd be this thing dragged over to damage causer, and that's it. We're going to tick the tick box at the end and say it was successful, and we're all good to go. So let's now add this to our animation. So let's find my animation for my montage, and if it does do this. T posing, A posing type thing, that's fine, just close it and reopen the thing again and it'll be just fine. And you want to find the point of where you want to deal damage, so mine is going to be about there. And on a notify track, we're going to go find and right click on that area at that time, go add notify, and you should see your deal damage notify. Click on this and that is it. So now it will deal damage at that point in time. So um let's go ahead and take a look at that in action we're going to go to our stone resource here and we're going to turn off this timer and that's it okay so let's take a look at this in action so no longer it's spitting out rocks anymore if i do this 
you can see I can now hit it and get resources out of it and they're flying out. There you go. That one went somewhere. Uh, go. There you go. There you go. Go. Oh, it's kicking out some gems there, I see. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, so we're dealing damage to this stone. And obviously we want this stone to eventually run out of health and deplete. Um, so we're going to go to our stone resource here. And go to the resource component. And yeah, our health at the moment is set to a thousand. And we're only applying one damage to it. If you go to edit the resource component. Um, we've got the damage happening over here. Okay. Uh, we want it to disappear when the health here is below a certain amount. Let's take out the health value get and do is less than or equal to zero and if it is we're going to disable it and move it now depending on what kind of survival game you want to do if you want it to respawn later just make it hidden in game or make it not visible or something like that or you can just destroy actor if you want it to be a finite resource so just do destroy actor uh oh sorry you have to get owner first get owner and then destroy actor Now, as I said, this thing has a thousand health. We're going to decrease that for now, just so we can test this out uh, by going to the stone resource, click on the resource component, and changing the health here down to like, I don't know, let's do five. Wow. Okay, hit play, and bosh, there's one, two, three, four. There you go, and it's gone. So. We can now pick up resources and destroy resources with our tools and weapons. Uh, but we may want to know what weapon we're hitting it with. So not everything can be used against the stone here, for example. Now the stone resource is using our resource component. And that resource component is only dealing damage based upon this player tool enum that's been set. And by default, it's set to use the pickaxe. So therefore, it's happy to take that damage. If we go to the stone resource here, I've set up here that the pickaxe will deal one damage to it, whereas everything else will be take a lot less, uh, well, will take a lot more time because they're not set to anything. Okay, so we're going to go and add our uh, damage type to our deal damage here to indicate what weapon we're hitting it with. So damage type class is going to be a class we make, and we're going to go to blueprint class, and we're going to go to uh, damage uh, type, there it is. Click select and this will be damage type base. And on here, we're going to open this up and add a variable. And the variable is going to be the tool type. Search for our enum that we've made, e tool, right. compile and save that. Now we also want to give this thing the interface for the combat. So if I go to my class settings and go add and do combat interface, it'll add that interfaces here. Now I do want to make a new interface for this. So let's go to my combat interface, add new function. And in here, I want to get tool type. And this is going to output the tool type enum. So e tool type. And hit compile and save. And if we go back to the damage type base here, you should now see get tool type appear as an interface option. So right click on this one and go open graph. And it's going to output the tool. So we're going to just drag in our variable for tool. And that is it. We're going to hit save and leave that as it is. We then want to make the duplicates of that, or not duplicates, so children of that. So right click on damage type class, make child. And we're going to call this one pickaxe. So open this up. And let's change the tool type here to pickaxe. It's already done, so cool. Make another one. And this one will be called axe. Open this up and change the drop down here to axe. Okay, and you can keep on going. But we're going to keep the damage type pickaxe here for our swing montage. Now, the swing montage needs to know what one we're swinging here to apply. And to get that, we're going to get it from the owner. And that's going to be assigned to the weapon that we've got attached to our character. Now, the weapon base uh, melee, 
we're going to have, actually no, we'll do weapon base, uh, weapon metal base, weapon base. And in here we'll have in the variable of which damage type this thing should be sending. So let's go to variable list. And in here we're going to do um, uh, get, uh, no, sorry, sorry, damage type. That would be a damage type class. Maybe damage type base. Oh, sorry, not, it won't be an object reference, it'll be a class reference. Damage type base class reference. There we go. So on my weapon melee pickaxe, I can go to the right hand side and you'll see damage type says none. I can change that to damage type base pickaxe. Okay, so now I've got that, I need to get hold of the weapon that I'm holding, the uh, and what damage type it's been assigned all on that damage deal damage notifier. So deal damage notifier is annoying because we only have access to the owner of the mesh comp, which is be the player character. But from there, I can trace through and get hold of what I need. So on the get owner here, we're going to cast to our first person character. And we'll make that pure cast. On that first person character, we have got the child actor. So we're going to get child actor. And get that one there. We then want to take this child actor and we want to get the child actor that is spawned by this component. And then from there, I want to cast to weapon melee base. Again, make that pure cast. And now I've got access to the weapon melee base. And now I can get the damage type from this. Get yeah, damage type. And I can plug that into our chart class file and save that. So then on the other side of things, when the stone receives input, um, input from the damage, we're going to go to the resource component, edit resource component. This player tool here is actually going to come from the damage actor damage type here. So damage type here, we're going to drag out into get tool. And that's going to return the tool type that the weapon actually is that in and plug that into there and now we've got our tool going across to that and I can prove this as well by going to print string here and making it print out the name of the tool so, and hit compile and save that so our default weapon is set to pickaxe so it should start not in water start over here when I do damage, we should see it print out pickaxe. Okay, and it should click quite quickly. But if I were to change that, for example, to something else, so if I go to my uh, weapon again, tools, weapon, base, pickaxe, if I change this to output a axe type, the stone has been told that it's axe reaction would be 0.25 so it's going to take a lot more time four times as long to kill it so back to my play here and hit with the axe and you see there it's printing axe and you can see here it's taken a lot more for me to destroy this thing now the resource has been dropped every single time you may not want that to be the case you may only want it to be the case if the tool that's dealing damage to it is above one in value so we're going to go to our resource and resource uh, component that's print string now and we want to take this tool and look at the tool damage and find this value here and check it to see whether or not this value is greater than one if it's greater than one we're going to drop the resource so let's just move that along here in fact what we we'll probably have to do is make the health system check the remaining health before we drop the resource, so let's put that in there and put that in here. Okay, so if it's true, it will destroy actor, and then we'll do carry on with destroy resource, drop resource, and then false here will go down to drop resource. So over on here, then um, we want to do a check 
in this false well before this drop resource happens here we have another check here another branch that in there connect that up to these two places and then a uh, true would go into drop resource and the branch condition is whether or not this find value is greater than one so we do greater than or equal to one and plug that into the condition so now i should only drop resources if i'm using the pickaxe not an axe so if i go and play this one now you can see here my axe is doing damage to it but i'm not getting any resources to it and I can keep doing damage to it and it will eventually die, but it won't ever drop a resource because I'm not using the correct weapon. See? But if I change this back to pickaxe type and then hit play, I will get resources because I'm using a pickaxe. There we go. Okay, there we go. We've now got our resource gathering in the action. However, we're going to work on that interaction system in the next episode so we can pick up items from the floor, including tools and resources that have been dropped rather than just walking over them. You can watch the next part right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can catch all my videos early before anyone else. Big shout out and thank you to all my patrons for their continued support as well as my YouTube members. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.